There, this is Sam Flegel, and I'm doing a demo here for my Liberty or Death painting of a Norse Valkyrie. The first thing you see me do here is I, um, I'm going to apply Linquin uh, mixed with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits over the whole piece, and that's an alkyd medium that increases or speeds up the drying time. Uh, now, I'm starting to use my brushes. Now, one, one thing you can't see here on the video is that over to the side, I've got my palette already mixed up with different color choices. Uh, my basic concept I'm going for is uh, there's fire in the background here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is lay in the areas of dark that are around the fire. Now, as you're looking at the piece, uh, you can see uh, that I have a very clean and crisp drawing. Now, this is done through an oil printing process that I get done at a printer. Uh, beforehand I've done a drawing uh, using gray toned paper and then black and white colored pencil over that. And I even use a little bit of Copic marker to uh, get some uh, nice gray tones in there. And so uh, I've made sure uh, digitally to remove all the whites and make sure that it's the pure white board showing through. And so now I'm using oil paint to uh, block in those dark areas, but you can see I'm primarily avoiding the, the white areas and uh, the areas that are going to represent fire. Uh, so after I've laid in just blocks of color, I'm going to come in with a big brush and smooth it all out. Uh, just mi mix and blend, and this is really what oil painting is all about. You know, you get in there and it just feels all buttery and good. And anyway, just main, main goal here is to smooth it out. Um, nothing too complicated. Uh, but you can see uh, when you have that strong drawing underneath, you're already at a place where, uh, you know, it's starting to come together. And, and, you know, really at this point I've done not that much. You know, it's just adding color to the drawing. Um, and so that, that's an important thing to remember as you're planning your image. None of this is by accident. Uh, this is carefully planned out uh, kind of stuff you want to make sure that, you're thinking about ahead of time. I think a lot of people may imagine that uh, oil painters just sit down and make magic happen. And, and while I think there's some truth to that, uh, you know, for the most part, it's it's carefully, meticulously uh, planned and, and thought out. So now I'm going to start working into the fire area. And I actually am starting off with a green uh, down there. It's a greenish umber. Uh, then I'll lay in a little bit of red. Uh, and you know, just I like it the way it gets dirty when it mixes with that greenish umber, and then start uh, laying in uh, with some cadmium yellow. But of course, the cad yellow is mixing uh, with that with the red and the green, and and so it's not going to be pure. Um, now, when you're first uh, watching this, you you, you may think uh, I've gone a little bit too dark and. Uh, all I can say is just don't don't worry about that. There's there's a method to the madness, and there's a very specific reason I've left all that white space underneath the board. Um, so now it's just about you know uh, using that those fog effects and and getting the, the brush dirty and, and not cleaning the brush too often and and letting the paint uh, mix there right on the board. Uh, once again, you know that that drawing, uh, staying strong and, and through, uh, really helping to plan and show what's, what's going to happen. Uh, and then once again, I'm taking a big brush and just smoothing everything out after I've laid in, uh, all those warm colors that are, that are going to represent the fire, uh, in the background. Um, and I'm, I'm not going for anything too specifically other than I'm just trying to get rid of a lot of those brush strokes. I don't, I don't want it to look uh, real brushy, you know. I want it, I want it to look like fire. Um, so just smoothing that into the background, and you know, just in in general, uh, getting everything smoothed out. All right, now we're going to speed things up here just a little bit, um, as uh, this next section is just uh, it's me blending and and blending some more. Again, getting all those brush strokes out and just getting it as smooth as I want it to be. Now this next section is going to seem a little bit like like magic. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking odorless mineral spirits just in its purest form. 
others might use turpentine or turpenoid for this purpose, but I, I use OMS and I'm now carving out uh, the paint, pulling it back out again uh, with a brush and uh, then wiping it occasionally. You'll see me with a rag. And so this is why it was so important to leave that white board underneath. Uh, now I can come back in and, and pull out the light um, so it becomes a subtractive process rather than an additive process. And you can see so quickly, it just starts looking cool. You know, it looks like fire. Uh, it probably looks like I spent a lot of time doing this, but e and even though this video is sped up, um, I mean this whole whole process probably was about an hour, maybe an hour and a half at the most. Um, and so now you, you get to see coming in with the rag and with the brush and just uh, pulling everything out. Um, I I really like the way it looks. Uh, it's such a great technique. I learned this originally from uh, Boris Vallejo and Julie Bell. Uh, when I took the illustration master class and I was really surprised to see them work and that uh, particularly in the beginnings of their painting uh, it's it's all about uh, adding and then removing out shapes again and uh, watching them work I mean they they are masters at it but uh, through the years I, I've used this technique and it's really great particularly for special effects like fire or anything where you want to have that glow but it can work for a lot of things. It can work for, for rocks, um, all sorts of background uh, details. And even, even on your figure, again, it's, it's, if you've left uh, white, you can, you can pull out highlights again. Uh, so you now see, uh, once I pull them out, I will come back in with a brush and, and make sure that they're blended into place, that they become uh, a, part of, a part of the piece. Um, otherwise, it could be a little jarring uh just you know having it out but uh, yeah and and the rag i'm using i mean this is just uh t-shirt rags that you'd get at an um home supply store home depot lowe's that sort of place uh and and i just buy a box of t-shirt uh rags that you find in the painting section and uh, you can use them to to pull out uh, cloth and then just a big brush and then a fan brush. This is actually probably one of the only things I actually use a fan brush for um, It's one of those brushes that doesn't really come up all that often, but uh, it can get some neat little effects uh, as you're you're brushing in um, And so I do want to say this this is not the ending of, of this um, But it is a big step and once this dries you can then come in and glaze and you know add more color but because you've got this bright uh, white board showing through it's going to be brighter than any amount of white that you could add all right now uh, you see me uh, add a little spritz effect using a toothbrush and an old amazon gift card the reason i like using the card is it lets you d apply the direction uh, of of the the spritz and then i'm just going to blend it in and, and you'll see uh, very slowly uh, those little dots now removed from the back and just adds a little bit of randomness and and little, like little dots uh, coming off the fire which I love and then finally I've just wadded up the uh, the rag and I've started blotting it on the board and then uh, smoothing those things in into space and then the final event thing is to come in uh, with the rag and wipe out uh, where I've gone over the figure see I haven't been particularly worried about uh, keeping up with my figure's edges again I, it's got a strong drawing and it's just a matter of uh, cleaning that up and and pulling out uh, back the, to the drawing so that when I come in uh, after this first layer is dry uh, I can then focus on the, the figure details and uh, you know making sure all that stuff's right and occasionally you'll see me uh, mess up and pull a little too much out of the background and you know just come back in and smooth it out again uh, with the brush Again, this is such an early phase in the painting, and oil paint's very good at going opaque, so there's a lot that you can fix, and not a whole lot you can, can really mess up at this point. And that's it. I'm Sam Flegel. Thanks for watching.